Welcome, and thank you for listening to Sandy Creek Stirrings. I'm your host, Joshua Jimenez. And if you're going to win souls, you've got to love souls. In spite of their meanness, in spite of the way they look, in spite of everything, you've got to seek to bring souls to Jesus Christ because you love them, because Jesus loved them, and because Jesus died for them, and you're trying to bring them to the Son of God. The Bible says in Psalm 84, 11, my last verse, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. I've based my whole life on that, that it pays to serve God, and I believe that with all my heart. God has given us a guidebook. God has given us a directional map, and that guidebook, that map, is the precious Word of God. Listen, don't just go and sit in the pew. Find some way to serve and serve as a family. Be a part of everything at church, and when you learn to love what God loves, um, your children will learn to love it as well. Homes are not that spiritually strong. We're getting overtaken by the world quickly, but unfortunately, we're pumping all the sewage in. You know, we're letting the world in when that ought to be a haven. You've heard me say it before, and I will say it again. Someone once said that Baptists have typically done a good job of soul winning and baptizing those converts, but they have done, in the past, a horrible job of discipleship. Now, whether or not that's true is up to how you're going to define that. I would have to say in general, and I'm not saying every single Baptist church, but I'm saying in general, I think that statement could sadly be quite true. I think in many regards, we don't disciple enough converts. We don't take them and teach them the basic doctrines of the Word of God. In fact, that's what discipleship is. Discipleship is that training time after salvation, after baptism, where a new convert, a, a new, a, a baby Christian, is taught the basic beliefs of the faith. They are taught the milk of the Word of God, as Paul referred to it as. And this discipleship is typically done, what, what happens is a more mature Christian who is someone who's able to adequately teach these things, these basic doctrines, these milk-of-the-word things, to another. This person goes and they t- typically take them one-on-one and disciple them. They teach them these things. You know, the sad fact is, and if I can turn the tables for a minute, the sad fact is is that churches across America, discipleship is falling by the wayside. Okay, discipleship is falling the, by the wayside because there is no discipleship, because there is no one to disciple the no con, the new convert. Now I don't know if that made much sense to you or not. I know I kind of jumbled it up a little bit there, but can I say that I believe one of the big reasons why discipleship is failing in many churches, though they're just not doing it. Rather, it's not that it's failing; they're just not doing it. But I think many reasons why churches aren't doing it is because as a church grows, a pastor literally cannot fit into his schedule to disciple every single person on a one-on-one basis. He just can't. As a church grows, he doesn't have that much time. So what happens is, is the pastor needs people to step up who can do discipleship, who can disciple someone, who can sit them down and meet with them once a week and say, hey, let's learn some things about the Word of God. And frankly, who can he turn to? Let me pose this question to you, dear listener, today. If your pastor needed a new convert to be discipled, he needed someone who could step in, take time out of their schedule, sacrifice some of their time every single week, come alongside a new convert, a new born-again believer, and disciple them, let me ask you this, and think about this. I truly want you to ponder this. Could he ask you? Could he ask you? Could your pastor come to you and say, hey, Mr. Bob, hey, Miss Jill, we have so-and-so over here just got saved. Could you disciple them? That's a big question. And I think the problem is, is it is the fact that pastors are lacking people who they can turn to to help them, to, be, to, to help their pastor in the area of discipleship. And can I just say this? Discipleship is so critical. People need to be discipled. 
Now, in many regards and in many ways, let me just put this out there, if that new convert is faithful to church, which they should be, all right? They need to be faithful to church. If they are faithful to church, they're coming Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and you are in a church that is biblical, which you should be, amen. You are in a church that has Bible preaching, it has Bible teaching. I mean, it's a good, solid church. By the way, if you can't say that of your church, you need to change churches. And uh, But, you know, if you're in that type of church and this new convert is in that type of church and they're coming to every single service, in many regards, I'll just put this out there, in many regards, they are getting discipled through the preaching and the teaching they get in Sunday school and Wednesday nights, mainly teaching services. And then you got the Sunday morning and Sunday night are more on the preaching side of services. And so, you know, they're going to get what you might say is discipled through those preaching times, but discipleship, that one-on-one time, or sometimes in maybe a smaller class setting, is really effective for keeping those converts steady in their newfound faith. That's what it does. It stabilizes them. It stabilizes them. It teaches them the basic things they need to know so when they talk to their coworkers, when they talk to, if it's, a, if it's a student, they talk to their teacher, when they talk to their parents, when they talk to their spouse, and those people bring up doubts and supposed contradictions of their faith, they are founded, they are secure, and Satan's not going to be able to knock them off as easily as you see people who get saved, but then they kind of just basically fall away. Why? Partially it was because they were never discipled. They didn't have that full assurance. They weren't taught the things of the of the milk of the Word of God to keep them safe and secure. And so discipleship is critical. The question is, and I pose it again to you, could your pastor ask you? Could your pastor ask you? Now today we're going to begin, um, I think we're going to make this maybe into two parts, maybe three, I doubt it though. It's probably just going to be a two-part uh, series, you might say, a two-part episode. And we're going to talk about discipling, how to, how to help your pastor in the area of discipleship, how you can disciple someone, give some practical tips today, and uh, but very even more practical tips next week on exactly what you're doing. This week I want to talk about something, or an not this week, but in this episode, we'll release the second part a couple episodes from now. But in this episode, as we talk about how to disciple someone, how to be involved in discipleship, we're going to talk about the very first thing you need before you can ever schedule a meeting or schedule a time or what do you do and what do you cover. Before you do any of that, you first need today's episode. Not this episode, as in of Sandy Creek Stirrings, but you need the content of what we're going to talk about today. So before we hop into that, though, let me thank you for listening to Sandy Creek Stirrings, of course, this podcast. Let me encourage you to visit our website, www.sandycreekstirrings.com. Again, that's www.I'll say it slower, Sandy Creek Stirrings. Dot com. And there you can find all of our most recent episodes. You can also find an about page and then our contact page. There's three pages on the, on the website. Super easy, super simple. And But our contact page is right there. Let me encourage you. If you have a question about the Bible, if you have a question about ministry, if you have a question about whatever, what's my favorite brand of hot dogs, um, whatever it may be, um, you can send those questions in right there on our contact page. Again, that's www.sandycreekstirrings.com. Go to the contact page. You can send in those questions, or you can email me. My email is joshua at sandycreekstirrings.com, joshua at sandycreekstirrings.com, or you can message us through Facebook, and we would love to hear those questions you may have. And so thank you for listening to this episode today. If you are a podcast follower, subscriber, listener, whatever you want to call yourself, then I thank you for being a part of this podcast. So for today... What do we first need to do to be able to disciple someone? How can you become someone who your pastor can turn to and say, hey, I can trust you to disciple a new convert? How can you become that person? And so here's what you need to do. Very first thing, number one, you need to sit down and learn your basic doctrines so that you can begin to volunteer and help disciple people. You, that's what you need to do. You need to be discipled 
first before you expect to disciple other people. And I know that sounds very basic, but let me tell you something. There are some basic doctrines that you need to know, and there's some questions I want to ask you at the end of this. We're going to talk about just some basic doctrines real quick, but then I'm going to ask you some questions at the end of the episode that you need to be able to answer in regard to these basic doctrines. So if you're going to volunteer to be able to help your pastor in the area of discipleship, Here's what you need. And then next episode on this thing, we'll talk about what do you need besides just the basic doctrines? Because you need to know some things, but you also need to be doing some things. What should you be doing? We'll talk about that in the next episode. So what's some basic doctrines you need to know? Well, here's what you need to know. I'll give you a quick list, and let's see if you can uh, follow along. Number one, you need to know that salvation is by grace through faith. There is no other way. You don't get saved by baptism. You don't get saved by works. You don't get saved by any of those other things. You only get saved by salvation, which is by grace through faith, getting something you do not deserve putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Of course, how do we back that up? Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. Here's something else you need to know. You need to know that the church was started on the shores of Galilee by Christ with his disciples, Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 18. Here's something. You need to know that any religion that teaches any other gospel than Christ is to be accursed. That's what the Bible says, Galatians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. You need to know that Christians should be in church on Sundays and Wednesdays or any other time. The church door is open for services, no ifs, no ands, no buts. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, which says, "...not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, but so much the more," after the manner of some is, rather, "...but so much the more as ye see the day approaching." All right, so God cares about us being in church. God cares about what church we go to. God cares about who and when the church was started. And then God cares about how you get into the church. There's only one way, by the way. And basically, that's the four things we just discussed. Each of these doctrines are essential for you to be able to disciple someone. You have to know and believe for yourself. Frankly, if you don't believe that salvation is by grace through faith alone, let me just say this, and I'll say it as nice as I can. You have no right to disciple anybody because you're wrong, and you're going to teach them false doctrine. Here's the thing. The pastor can't go to every single person in the church and say, hey, I need you to disciple someone because there are some people they don't know some of the basic things of the Word of God. Now, it's not to say they won't learn. It's not to say they're not investing time in learning, but you first have to get these things nailed down in your own heart first. It's not enough for your pastor to believe them. It's not enough for your pastor to hand you a discipleship book and, and you say, this is what the book says. That's not enough. You need to believe them for yourself. You need to know that all entertainment. God cares about what you do and what you watch on TV. You need to know that all entertainment should be filtered through Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. You know, if it's not true, don't watch it. If it's not honest, don't listen to it. If it's not just, don't get involved with it. If it's not pure, don't check it out on Netflix. Look, if it's not, of, if it's not lovely, if it's not of good report, all these things are listed in Philippians 4, 8. If it's not a virtue or of praise, don't post it on Facebook. Have nothing to do with it. God cares about what you do on social media. God cares about entertainment. God cares about movies. God cares about you having a separated lifestyle. That's not something you should just believe, but it's something, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in the next episode on this, on this subject of discipleship. It's not just something you should believe. It's also something that you should practice as a separated lifestyle. God cares. Um, how about this one? A Christian should never listen to music of the world anytime, anywhere. Never! Or even Christian, quote-unquote, music that sounds like the world. That sounds like the world. Let me tell you something. We have a bunch of Christian music artists right now playing music that let me tell you something, they're producing music that is absolute filth and it's absolute garbage. I, I Somebody had a song they, they wanted me to check out, they wanted to know my opinion, and I listened to it. And I tell you what, it was absolute garbage. 
it was by a, a Christian group. And I tell you what, when I worked in the secular world, um, I managed a hardware store for four and a half, almost five years. When I did that, the the boss had restrictions. We could only turn the music to certain stations. So for basically four and a half years, it was country music every day. So basically, I was put into that country music environment for four and a half years. I know what Christian. I know what no, <laughs> I know what country music sounds like. And let me tell you something. When you have a Christian group that puts out music that I can't tell the difference between it and a country song, it ain't Christian. It ain't. That's a good good term to use. But let me tell you something. If you are going to disciple someone else, you need to understand that the fact that God cares about you being separated from the world, both in your entertainment, in your music, and it, hey, can I just put this out there? It doesn't matter if you put Christian in front of it or not. does not matter if you put Christian in front of it or not. If it's worldly, it's worldly, period. God cares about your your separation and your entertainment and your music, but then God cares about your separation and your appearance as well. God cares about that. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter eleven fourteen 14 says, A man ought to cut his hair to look like a man. God says that to expose the thigh is nakedness. That's found in uh, Exodus chapter 28, verse 42. God says there should be a modesty and, and distinctness and apparel for men and women. There's never a time for a man to put on a woman's garment. There's never a time for a woman to put on a man's garment. They are to be separate 24-7, 365 days a year. Deuteronomy 22, 9, 1 Timothy chapter 2, and verse 9 as well. So God cares not only about your separation at home and in your music and in your entertainment. God also cares about your appearance. Those are things that you are going to have to look out and settle within your own heart before you begin to disciple somebody else. You need to understand the reason why sodomy is an abomination. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. You need to understand that a, a man and a woman who are not married should never touch sensually. 1 Corinthians chapter number 7, verse number 1. Uh, there should be a, a separation from other churches who do not believe Christ is the only way to heaven or do not hold to the doctrines that have been handed down to us and have, you know, we should have no fellowship with those churches. These are things you're going to have to learn. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 29 and 32 cover this idea that there should be no contact with alcohol of any kind in any form. It is the duty of the church to reach souls for Christ, Mark 16, 15. Um, you should know about tithing, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Every Christian should give 10% of their income to Christ through the local church. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, you should know that the world was created in literally six days. You should know that the rapture happens before the tribulation, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And there's some other things we could list, but I'll stop there because here's what you need to understand. When you are discipling someone, they are going to have some questions about some very basic things. When the rapture happens is a very basic question. You need to know the answer. Now, does that mean you're going to know when discipling someone? Does that mean you're going to know the answer for every subject and every topic that comes up? No, absolutely not. Look, I run a podcast, and this is episode number, what is this, episode number 141, I think. I have no clue about some things. I'll tell you what, uh, my preacher asked me, hey, I want you to start studying out this, and I want you to teach on it in a couple of weeks. And I have, like, I've barely ever heard of it before, and I have no clue about it, but I'm going to begin studying. And here's the deal, we're going to ask this question here in just a minute. But you need to learn to study things out. And so that doesn't mean that you're going to be a know-it-all and you have the answers to all the questions. But here's what I'm trying to get across in our point today. You need to know some of the basic doctrines of the Word of God. So here's the question. How do you learn those? How do you learn those basic doctrines of the Word of God? Well, there's a couple of ways. Number one, if you've been discipled, you will have learned them. If you have been discipled, you will have learned them. If you have never been discipled, it would be a good idea to go to your pastor and say, Preacher, would you mind having someone disciple me? I know I've been in church here for a little bit, but, you know, I've never been discipled. There's still some of these very basic doctrines that I just don't know. Could somebody disciple me so I could grow closer to the Lord and so that I could move from milk to meat and so that I could be a blessing to help disciple other people? 
I think that's very important. You need to be discipled before you disciple someone else. You need to be taught those basic milk of the word doctrines before you uh, go and teach somebody else. The second thing is, is you need you need to be under the spout of the preaching every time the doors are open. That's another way you'll be taught these basic doctrines. If your pastor is a good pastor, over time he will be teaching these doctrines in one way or the other. You'll be learning them. And so it's very important that if you want to be involved in discipleship, you learn these milk of the word doctrines. Now I have a couple questions for you as you're pondering this idea of discipling somebody else. Number one, my question is, do you know what you believe? Do you know what you believe? I want you to very carefully listen to how I phrased that. I said, do you know what you believe? I didn't say, do you think you know what you believe? But do you know what you believe? Sadly, there are Christians sitting in churches across America who think they know. Or they, they don't have a true in-depth seated knowledge. They know this is a fact but more of, I know this is my opinion. I know this is what I think. Let me tell you something, that's not what matters. You need to know these things for yourself. If you doubt, let's just throw this out there, if you doubt that salvation is by faith alone, if you're struggling with that, and you say, well, I think that's the way it's supposed to be. Well, that's what the Bible says, but I'm just, eh. Well, here's what you need to do. Before you disciple anybody, you need to settle that for yourself, and it needs to be something you know you believe. Now, you may say, I don't know all the details and I don't understand it all. It's, um, you know, maybe the Trinity. You say, I know the Trinity. I know I believe the Trinity. Um, do I understand it all? No. Can I explain it all? No, but I believe it. And that's going to be the key. There may be some things that you may not be able to explain you're still learning about. That's fine. But I'm talking about some of these basic milk of the word doctrines. Are they things that you know you believe? Or are they things you think you believe? You're still trying to settle on them. If that's the case, I would settle them before I try to disciple anybody else. Because here's what's going to happen. The devil's no dummy. He's going to use anything he can. So in discipleship, he's going to put a question in the thought of the person you're discipling. Hey, ask them about, you know, we just mentioned um, salvation by grace and faith alone. He's going to put a question into that person, and he's going to say, hey— you know, why don't you ask them what they believe about salvation by grace through faith? And they're going to ask, and you're saying, well, you know, the Bible says, you know, and I'm just, I'm really not sure I'm struggling. That's not going to work. You have to settle it. You have to know what you believe. So it's very important. Maybe go through this list we just talked about today. We also talked about a basic doctrines that you need to know in the very first episode of Baptist History. Very first episode of Baptist History, some basic doctrines. Let me encourage you to go back to that lesson and go through and learn those and say, you know, do I believe these for myself, or is it just something the Bible says, but I don't actually believe it? That's so critical for you to do before you try to disciple someone else. Second question I want to ask you, is your answer based off of Scripture or off of man? Is your answer based off of Scripture or off of man? So in response to, let's keep going with the example we've used for most of the day today, but let's say the person you're discipling all of a sudden asks you, so why are we saved by grace through faith and not works? Is your answer going to be, well, I heard on BBN the other day, you know, the Bible Broadcasting Network. And, uh, you know, is that going to be your answer? Well, I heard on BBN the other day, and so-and-so said this. Or is it going to be, the Bible says this here in Ephesians chapter 2? Hey, can I just throw this out there? I don't care what BBN says. Thank you for listening to BBN, the Bible Broadcasting Network. I don't care what BBN says. I care what God says. I care what his word says. I want to know what his word says on the topic. I don't care what preacher so-and-so said, or this guy over here on YouTube said, or, or this guy wrote on the blackboard on YouTube. I don't care. I care what the word of God says. And here's the thing. Whatever answer you give, you need to be able to back it up with scripture. And you say, well, Josh, does that mean, you know, when I'm sitting down with somebody with discipleship and they ask me a question and I can't remember the verse, does that mean that I, I can't disciple somebody? No, I'm not saying that. There will be times where you're like, you know, the verse says this, but I can't remember the reference. There will be times like that. 
Look it up on your phone. Do something. But learn to study out those answers, but base them not off of your opinion or what you heard, but what the Bible says. Can can I just go back and, and look at something I just mentioned? I don't care about your opinions either. And your opinions don't matter. If that person says, why is salvation by grace through faith and not by works? You shouldn't say, well, my opinion on that topic is, eh, you messed up. That's not what it's supposed to be about. You should respond with, okay, let me answer that. Here's what the Word of God says. Here's what God says on the topic. Here's what God would answer that question with. Let's look over here. And maybe they ask a question, and you don't know the answer. And you say, you know what? That's a very good question. Honestly? I don't know. That's a very good question, though. You know, why don't we both go on Sunday and ask our pastor? It's a great way to handle it if you're not sure or can't remember the Scripture passage. But let me ask you this. Knowing what you believe, are you basing it off of Scripture or are you basing it off of man? That's something you need to settle in your heart before you decide to try and volunteer for discipleship. Number three, do you study out answers for what you don't know? Do you study out answers for what you don't know? Let's say you want to be involved in discipleship, and you say, that's something great. You know, and I believe salvation by grace through faith, and I believe in baptism, and I believe in all these different things, but you know, I don't know anything about the rapture. I don't know when it's supposed to be, what's going to happen. Well, let me ask you the question. Why don't you just study it out? Why don't you just go ahead and learn it? You know what holds back some people from growing more is they're not willing to put in the work and effort to learn for themselves. And so it's very important you learn to study it out. There's many different things you can do to study out a topic. A good one is ask your pastor. Um, Another one is to look up that word. Maybe um, look up, you know, if you're going to learn something about tithing, look up tithe in the Bible and read every single passage about tithe and learn and study it out and understand what the the Bible says about it. That's a great way. You know, um, maybe if you heard a, a preacher preach on the topic, you can ask him. But it's very important to notice not what man says, but what the Bible says. What the Bible says, learn to study out your Bible and learn some things you don't know. And then here's the fourth thing, and we'll finish up for today. The fourth question I want to ask you before you start discipling someone is, are you bold enough to tell the truth of what you believe when faced with the question? Are you bold enough to tell the truth of what you believe when faced with the question? You say, what do you mean? Let's say that the new convert is a guy, a man, and he's got long hair down to his shoulders. And he says, you know, what What does God think about me having long hair? Here's my question. Are you bold enough to, in a right, loving way, say, you know what, Bob, let me tell you what God says. God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, that a man ought to cut his hair and have short hair. So, Mr. Bob, I think God would want you to shut your hair, or shut your hair. God would want you to cut your hair. Here's the question. Are you bold enough to stand up for the truth when it's the right time and when you have the answer? Are you bold enough to answer a question with the truth Or are you going to back away from it? Because frankly, there are some people who they're going to back away from that. They don't like confrontation to the point where they would say, you know what, Bob, I don't think it's too long. (laughs) Well, that's, that's not the right answer. You need to be truthful, and you need to be bold enough to give the answer. That's a serious question you need to ask yourself. They say, you know, hey, I listen to this, uh, this Christian country music. Do you think that's okay? Are you going to be bold enough to answer the truth? Are you going to be bold enough to answer the truth? And so those are the four questions I wanted to ask at the end of today's episode. Do you know what you believe? Not think. Do you know what you believe? Number two, is your answer based off of Scripture or off of man? Number three, do you study out answers for what you don't know? And number four, are you bold enough to tell the truth of what you believe when faced with a question? So those are some things you need to get in line. You need to learn exactly what you believe, some of the milk of the word doctrines. You need to know them, and you need to be able to back them up with Scripture. And then you need to make sure you know them. You need to make sure you can base them off of Scripture, what I just said. You need to make sure you start studying things you don't know, and then learn to be bold enough to always tell the truth. 
So that is the first step to being involved in the ministry of discipleship. Next week will be a lot more practical, everything from how to schedule a time, where you should host discipleship, what you should use to disciple somebody, answering tough questions, and moving forward with discipleship. So that's going to be a super practical episode. We'll release that a couple episodes from now. But my friend, until then, as you ponder being involved in discipleship, let me encourage you to do so. But as you ponder it, keep looking up and keep stirred up for the cause of Christ.